new, 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 Okay. That's the new song. I didn't think ahead of time. I had to ad lib it. We rehearsed all week. Here we go. What's this? First up, we have a couple of converters, and you're probably wondering why do we have so many of these converters? Well, we actually were told by a little bird that the most popular items searched on their electronics website were for converters. So we're like, okay, we'll, we'll pick up some of these. They're, they're pretty handy for electronics people, especially if you're doing single board computer stuff. This is a VGA to HDMI adapter. So sometimes if you have a, um, a computer or a device that has VGA output, and by the way, this can include um, microcontrollers, because a lot of microcontrollers that you know you can basically get VGA output um, with some filtering. Um, you know, because you have three analog outputs and H sync and V sync. So, you know, if FPGA or you have a fast microcontroller, you're generating VGA output, but you really want it to be HDMI so you can connect it to your local monitor or TV or whatever. Or you have an older computer that has VGA output and you want to connect it again to something with HDMI. This is a converter, it's fairly low cost. Uh, you put audio in if you want to add audio into the HDMI, because remember, HDMI is AV, it's both audio and visual. Uh, audio and uh, visual data. And um, there's USB power, you use a mini USB plug or wall adapter. It's a simple adapter, but it works quite well. Uh, it takes your VGA, gives you HDMI. Simple as that. Works with anything you have around the house, that's HDMI. Pretty much everything is these days. Handy. Handy. Shoot. And aerodynamic. Totally didn't mean okay. to drop it like that. <coughs> drop it like a hotcake. Okay. So, uh, okay, next up, we have this silicone mat. And this is a really cool mat. I actually picked these up <coughs> for us to use here at Adafruit. So um, you can see there's little like notches and it's because it's silicone, it's basically just like those baking mats. We were actually using baking mats, but they weren't as thick as this. So this is four millimeters thick. And so you can, as Vance is showing you, hot air your boards right on top of it. It protects your work surface. Um, it also isolates the heat so it doesn't end up uh, not only scarring your work surface, but you, you get more heat on the device itself. Um, it's just translucent silicone. It's got these little spots you can put things in. Um, it's just a little, it's not like sticky, but it's like not slippery. So when you put things on, they won't like slide around instantly. Um, glues don't stick to it. Uh, you know, you can wash it very easily with hot water and soap. Um, really handy if you want to have a board and then solder directly onto it because your soldering iron won't damage it and it won't damage your soldering iron. So great to protect your table, protect your devices, and makes rework a lot nicer. It's very cool. handy. A lot nicer than a baking sheet. Okay. Next up, <clears throat> another converter. This video converter is from HDMI to S-Video or CVBS, which is, you know, uh, NTSC PAL. What this is for is you have something that has HDMI, HDMI output, but you want to connect it to a very old TV or an older um, projector or, or some other device that has S-Video or NTSC. Another thing is if maybe if you want to read video signal in to your um, high-speed microcontroller or, or FPGA or something, um, and you have you know, an analog digital converter, the S-Video, I mean, it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, go through and read the audio and the S-Video signal than try to decode HDMI, which is extremely fast. This you can sample at whatever rate you want, but we think this is gonna be mostly for people who have an HDMI output with an older display. Um, you can select whether you want NTSC, oh, sorry, you know, composite, you know, mm. single wire RCA, or S-Video, S-Video does give you better quality because it separates the chroma, uh, the luma and the, the color, the chroma and the luma, the, the color and the brightness data is separated. So it does look better than just single RCA, NTSC or PAL. You can also select PAL or NTSC, <coughs> there's a little LED tells you it's on. Plug the HDMI in, automatically detects the resolution and pipes out S-Video or uh, RCA CVBS and then you also get stereo audio. Very okay. simple. Kind of nice though. It comes with like you know a power adapter and the S video cable and yeah, you know really nice like gold plate RCA cable. Really? So you get you kind of get everything you need. This is a more complete kit. Um, it's kind of nice, but if you have something with S video, go with that. You will get a better performance. Okay. And also aerodynamic. And, uh, this is cool. This is a sharp memory display. So we've actually stocked the 96 by 96 size display for quite a while. 
and they got discontinued. So Sharp doesn't make the 96 by 96 anymore. However, the good news is they make a 168 by 144, which is like four times the resolution. Yeah. And it's like even less expensive, which is like really sweet. So this is even less expensive despite being higher resolution. There's a catch though. Um, because this is a write-only display, you cannot use it with a device with low RAM. You need at least 3K of RAM to yeah, buffer so the display. that's why you got the Express now? So this is a Metro Express. It's a yeah. Sam D21 with 32K of RAM. You can't use this display on an Uno or a Leonardo or a 32U4 or a 328. So you have to use something with an M0 or an ESP8266 or an ESP32 or a Teensy, something with a bunch of RAM. Now, it's actually not a big deal. Almost all chips these days, except for these kind of ancient AVRs, have at least 4K of RAM. So not a big deal just watch out you can't use this with your older feathers or your older chips you know microcontrollers my grandparents used to tell me about those avrs all the time i know it definitely won't work with it with a teeny but the the good news is that um i can show this on the overhead yeah. this is a pretty cool display it's kind of a cross between e-ink and lcd so like it really is a, a very sharp looking display it's a sharp looking display let me let me actually because it doesn't have a backlight I might want to yeah, that's fine. light it up yeah. a little bit. It's lit. It's lit. So it's kind of a cross between e-ink and, and uh, LCD. So like e-ink, it's low power. So see what happens. Like, I'm going to reset it. So I have this, and then I unplug the board. The display it stays. Right oh. It doesn't stay for a very long time, but it stays for about three seconds, and so that you can refresh it. Um, but the refresh, you only need to pulse a pin for a, you know, a microsecond or so, a millisecond, to refresh it. So for very, very low power stuff, this is yeah. great. It's it like the snapshot of displays. You look at it and it disappears. Slowly. Yeah, invisible ink. Invisible ink. Okay. Um, but it's high resolution. It, it's extremely visible in daylight. So these are often used for like smart watches and, and outdoor displays. Yeah. Um, because it's, uh, it doesn't, it's not like a TFT where you have to have a backlight to see it. You, you know, it looks like paper basically and it's got this high-res screen so you can see this text it's um quite small but <clears> it is legible and um we have a level shifter on there and regulator so you can use it with a three volt or five volt microcontroller in okay. this case you use it with a metro express and it works lovely good stuff so and sharp uh, display. here we are the star of the show besides you <coughs> lady Ada, mm, yes is this it's another display displays are the word of the day this is, when I saw this, actually it's funny, I, I saw this TFT in a, like a little accessory and I was like, I must have this TFT in the store. It is so small, it's only like one inch diagonal, but it's 160 by 80 um, pixels, which is really high density for such small displays. It's higher density than even OLEDs, and so you get a very tiny screen, but with a lot of pixels in it. So let's check it out on the overhead so I can show this off. So I gotta get in real close. And then let me turn, sorry, turn That's this, pretty amazing. this backlight off. Yeah. So you can see um, how much text you can fit into it. And you know, you can you can read it. I'll hold it up really close. Yeah. That's so it's so very clear. legible. And then you can also of course display images. I'm yeah. just running this off of a a slow 32. So this one you can use with any microcontroller because it the chip has memory. Yeah. <clears throat> on the inside to buffer the display. So uh, you can do text, you can do images, you can do all graphics, it's full color. Um, it's just so small and cute. Um, it uh, uses the ST7735 chipset, which is a really well-known chipset. So every microcontroller these days has a driver for it and um, just extremely high resolution for such a small size. So I have a plan of making like a feather wing out of this, but this is also great as a little breakout. Um, I added two mounting holes in case you wanted to attach it to something, but you can break them off if you want to um, make it even smaller and, and more compact. Call them mouse bites or what are they called? These are uh, mouse bites, yeah. Okay. Mouse bit. Mouse bits. You can snap them off with pliers. Okay. And then there's, um, I'll just show, there's an SD card slot on the back. And so you can store images. There's a level shifter and a regulator. So again, you can use it with a three volt or five volt logic just fine. Very small. But does display work with a Pi? You can make it, uh, yeah, I don't know if we have ST7735 library on our own, but I'm sure somebody else has written one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you could use it with a Pi. It would be very small. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, there's a new products. Good work.